I was asked, what is plastic? This question can be answered in a lot of different ways depending upon your perspective. I see plastic from a technical standpoint. I see it at the molecular level. The specific chemistry involved and the structures that make up plastics have given rise to incredible capabilities. When I look at a plastic bag or a plastic bottle, this is sort of what comes to mind for me. <laughs> but from this science, I also start to see how we can develop new opportunities with plastics, wherein the consumer use is actually only one recurring step in an infinite cycle. But to accomplish this might require new chemistry, different than what we've been using so far. Let's think about the cycle of current plastics. Most current plastics start from a non-renewable petroleum resource. This is where we get the small molecule building blocks that we can later turn into uh, high molecular weight polymers and high performance plastics. Now originally, it might have seemed as though we had plenty of feedstock, plenty of oil to be making these materials. And we've made millions of materials out of plastics. This is a sampling of a few of my family's favorites. And why wouldn't they be so pervasive? I mean, after all, they're inexpensive to produce, they're easy to process, they're physically durable, and they're chemically inert. When I step back and I think about just how resilient plastics are, it's really astonishing. I could take that plastic bucket from my lab and kick it across the wall, kick it across the room into a wall and it wouldn't break, and I could put something in it so caustic and so corrosive that it actually dissolves glass. We've had that bucket for two and a half years. It's unfortunate that this has become an affliction on our planet as opposed to a benefit for our use. I mean, what other material do you look at in your household and say, you know, I've had this for a little while now, but it's only got about 400 years of life left in it. Probably good to throw this out and get a new one. And so what are these amazing molecules? Well, as I mentioned, we get the monomers, the small building blocks from oil, and we turn those into polymers. Polymers are basically single molecules, but they're huge. Plastics that we can hold are basically polymer chains packed together. The plastic's properties change depending upon the structure of the polymer chains. Most types of plastics are what are known as thermoplastics. That means that they can be melted and reshaped without changing the chemical structure. As an example, my son took a bunch of polyethylene bags, melted them down and reformed them into a prototype sword. He claims from the same mold he can also make plastic spears, rods, snakes, and worms. <laughs> Another type of less common plastic are thermosets. These are things like melamine or uh, polyurethanes. In these cases, the polymer chains have actually, actually been chemically cross-linked. So the polymer chains are permanently bridged. They're connected to one another. Now, the original monomers and polymers weren't, but once you heat up a thermoset, then the cross-linking events happen, and then the material can't be melted after that. The polymer chains literally can't get away from one another. And this gives you more or less a permanent structure. So not all plastics are the same, and they differ at the molecular level. And in fact, many of us have already sorted plastics according to their specific polymer structures. These familiar numbers actually indicate more precisely what the type of polymer chains are in the plastic that you're looking at. So this is mainly an organizational tool and a simplified indicator of chemical structure. Now, just to get you oriented on how big polymers really are, in the upper corner is a single molecule of ethylene, and shown underneath that is only a fraction of an actual polymer chain. So a lot of bonds have to be constructed, and the synthesis of polymers is an exciting area of research. In fact, a number of Nobel Prizes in chemistry have actually been awarded for research relating to polymer science. So there's a vast community of researchers who are obsessed with macromolecules, and this, over time, has enabled us to synthesize diverse and well-controlled polymer structures. For example, each of these polymer structures produces essentially what might be looked at as a clear plastic but the chemistry is completely different between polyethylene at the top and polyethylene terephthalate at the bottom. The chemistry is different including their resistance to decomposition. Some types of plastics may only be responsive to combustion. Others might be hydrolyzable. Programming decomposition and degradation at the molecular level I think really has to be a focus for future plastics. I think the term recycle needs to reinquire the definition of what cycle means. We need to be able to go from a renewable source to a consumer product and then have that product break down into small carbon building blocks again. Not all polymers can do that, but here's an example of one that can. It comes from a renewable feedstock. Can anybody guess which one? <laughs> but it can be hydrolyzed to break down into smaller chains, and then microorganisms can break that down into CO2, which can then be converted back into the feedstock, thus completing the cycle. Changing the smallest details at the molecular level, though, like which way a methyl group points, can have tremendous impact on the macroscopic plastic. 
And this is where chemists love to play. We like to control and create molecular structures to achieve desired functions on a larger scale. There are different kinds of biodegradable polymers. Shown here are polyhydroxyalkanoates or PHAs. These entire polymer chains are actually produced directly by plants and bacteria. In some regards, PHAs have better physical properties, but actually biodegrade faster than the types of polyesters, like PLA. So this is the type of material to keep an eye on as we go forward. Now, the different polymer types may not be apparent to you when you're holding a plastic material in your hand, but I stress to you that the chemistry continues on well after we're finished with the product. And we can choose which route will be the ultimate fate of our plastics, and new polymer structures for plastics can help give us that choice. So yes, while plastics are truly amazing, we have to remember we're not locked in to the first draft of plastic chemistry. We can re-engineer at the molecular level to have big changes on a global level. So I encourage you to help facilitate that change, to provide motivation for new science, and in some ways to demand materials that participate in a sustainable cycle of use.